Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. So today we are going to talk about aromas. And now just remember, I am not a doctor. I'm, I'm not telling you to use any of these things, etc. I am simply giving you the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years for entertainment purposes and however you use it beyond that is beyond me. Okay, so that being said, aromasin is actually the trade name for the drug eczemastain, which is a drug used to treat breast cancer in women. Now, similarly to Arimidex, it's a member of the aromatase inhibitor class of drugs. Now, the original manufacturer was Pharmacia and Upjohn, but today Pfizer is the most well-known drug company that actually distributes it. Now, the drug was approved by the FDA in 1999 and has become very popular across the globe in postmenopausal women. So aromasin is a suicidal inhibitor, which means that it permanently disables the aromatase enzyme once it binds to it. So in simple terms, aromasin will prevent the currently bound enzymes from rebounding, which is what separates it from things like Arimidex, all right? And people that think that Novidex is an aromatase inhibitor, which it's not, but that's an entirely different video. It's an estrogen blocker, completely different, but I'll touch on that some other time. When you use other aromatase inhibitors, they temporarily stop estrogen from aromatizing, see Arimidex, but when you stop taking them, those same enzymes can rebound, which is what we call estrogen rebound. Then this explains why some anabolic steroid users experience gynecomastia after a cycle when they're using other aromatase inhibitors. Studies on breast cancer patients have actually shown that aromasin reduced estrogen levels by up to 85%. Now, Certain anabolic steroids convert to estrogen. Think all forms of testosterone, D-ball, for example, Trestolone. All right, these are examples. If it's not controlled, the user then runs the risk of developing several types of estrogenic side effects, such as gynecomastia, water retention, blood pressure issues. Um, I've done a video actually on um, high and low estrogen symptoms in men and women, so you should check that out as well. There's a domino effect that can occur if estrogen gets out of control. All right, and you just don't want to deal with it. It's something that, that can be problematic and it can get out of hand really quick. That's why I've always told people that you should really consider using an aromatase inhibitor from the start. Now, you might feel run down, lethargic, your blood pressure is going to soar, and your motivation is going to plummet. All right, and it can get you psychologically, it really can. These side effects will de totally defeat the purpose of running your cycle in the first place. And in addition, high estrogen levels when coming off a cycle, guess what happens then? They're going to interfere with recovery of the body's natural testosterone levels as well. So on the other hand, if you run a harsh aromatase inhibitor, which eliminates too much estrogen, it can also have negative effects on libido, mood, and it can dry out your joints. So since aromasin is a suicide, uh, suicidal aromatase inhibitor, you should work on controlling the dosages and tailoring it to your cycle. Just don't use random doses or something that somebody tells you. Uh, and and you, I, I take that back. You can use what someone tells you to start, but you have got to monitor your blood work and you have got to learn how your body is or is not sensitive to estrogen conversion. Now, let's quickly, aromasin versus arimidex. Now, as I talked about, the main advantage is aromasin will prevent any estrogen rebound by permanently disabling the aromatase enzyme while arimidex simply just can't do that. Though arimidex is a lot easier to control in terms of short-term dosing, meaning with short cycles under eight weeks, you might not need to kill your whole estrogen production, but it just depends because every single person is different on how their body responds and reacts. Now, let's talk about letrozole real quick. Letrozole is known to be too strong and too harsh. When using higher dosages of Letro, many bodybuilders are going to complain of reduced libido and slight depression. And this is due to the aromatase in the brain being disabled by letrozole use. It's crucial to control estrogen during your cycle, but you should never cripple it or you can really come down with some unwanted side effects. Even though estrogen is a female hormone, men still need it to function. And as with the Remedex, uh, Letro can also you know, not boast being a suicidal aromatase inhibitor. Now. Let's talk about some side effects. Now in bodybuilding and steroid use, side effects with aromasin are rare when it's taken at an appropriate dosage. But see, the problem is, is that um, it's just misused, okay? Some guys will, they'll complain about like joint pain, some dryness. So when that occurs, the dosage should be brought down. 
Now, sides among females are a lot more common because even though the doses are similar, the female body is gonna react far differently to an aromatase inhibitor than a man. And in addition, females will take this drug for a longer period of time, much longer than a man or a steroid user. Bottom line is the side effects of not taking an aromatase inhibitor for a male on, on cycle is probably a much higher risk. It's all about dialing that dose in. And you have to, see, you have to do it person to person specific. So don't let somebody get in your head about it. You have to figure out what works for you. All right, like everybody is different. Some people, I swear, they can't even be in the same, let, let's, let's think about this. Let me compare it to carbohydrates. Like some people can't even be in the same room as like pasta and bread and they gain weight. And some people can eat so much and not gain a pound. I don't know why, they don't know why, you don't know why, it's just the way we're wired. Everybody's different. So you gotta dial that in. Now dosage, like I said, it's user to user dependent. Generally speaking, let's just go generally, you're gonna look at like 12.5 milligrams every other day. All right, you've got to utilize your blood work though to see how your body's reacting. Um, the half-life is 25 to 27 hours, which means you can easily get away with taking it every other day or you can do it once a day as well. So my friends, that is Aromacin, everything that you could possibly want to know inside and out. So, Dylan Jamelli, signing off.